and this parable to become lazy. Because when you begin to realize that the person who you are waiting for has stepped so long, it's either you tell yourself, let me relax a little bit. And then trust me, he did not tell them when he was going to come. So it will be a surprise. So thank God we don't know the day he will come. And not about many have predicted as when he will come. But it has all failed. But the Lord was just someday sometime. The Bible says that he will appear in the, in, in the clouds. And we shall see him face to face. The Bible says the dead in Christ will rise up first. And we were alive if only he tarries after that time and we are still alive. The Bible says we also will be caught up in the earth to be with him. And forever will be with him. Hallelujah. Amen. In this same story we also see stewards or servants. If only you follow the reading. It talks about the fact that there were three people involved in this. As I began by saying one was given five, another two, another one according to your abilities. In other words, you see their attitude towards what they were given or the, the, the wealth that the man entrusted into their hands. But who is a steward? A steward or a servant is somebody who looks after another person's property or another person's estate. And so in this case, you realize that the treasures or the gifts that were given to them was not theirs. It belonged to the master, the king himself. Our soon coming King Jesus Christ has entrusted to his church gifts individually according to abilities. And the Bible says that he asked them to do something with it. As to what they would do with it, I'm not for sure that if only you are led by the Spirit of the Lord, you didn't know what to do with what he has entrusted into your hands. So the Bible says that they go straight to work with it. But I see this that from the beginning of creation, God has always done this. The Bible says he creates man in his very image and then he entrusts everything that he has created unto man. And so the first man, the first woman were given possession of, they were given control over everything that he, God had created. The Bible says even when it comes to the naming of the things that God had created, it was man who was given authority and power to do, to do the naming. It tells you how much God loves us. No one of us says, uh, look at how mindful our God is when it comes to mankind, it's amazing how much he loves us. So much that as I said, he will send his son to even come and bear for us, for our sins. A man who was without sin became sin for us, so that we will become the righteousness of God. You think about it, it is an amazing love. It is beyond comprehension. He is God. A place he will come again. So from the beginning we see that he's a God who always, when it comes to the world or the earth itself, you realize that God entrusted dominion or power to rule and to reign over the earth to mankind. He delegated that power and authority to mankind. But unfortunately, I believe that if you know the story about all from the book of Genesis, chapter, chapter 3, you realize that man, as a result of disobedience, lost that power, that glory, that authority. Handed it over to the devil. And I believe that as of now, we're still at work in our world, trying to confuse and to influence people to do what is wrong. But God is still at work, calling nations unto himself. And today he has called you and myself to go all out and bring them in so that they will be saved. Because soon and very soon, whatever we see will be gone. The earth, the heavens, the Bible says they will all be gone. Because the one who owns it would have taken it away. There will be a new earth, the new Jerusalem. He is king and he will do it in the fullness of time. Friends, what we look forward to his coming and the hope of his coming, the Bible tells us in verse 1 chapter 3 that those who look to his coming and, and the hope of his coming or have the hope of his coming, they purify themselves, they set themselves apart, they sanctify themselves daily. As I began by saying, when we come to Christ, he sanctifies us, he makes us holy. But then there is a need for us to know that as we walk with him daily, there is a need for us to make sure that we strive for holiness, for holiness, for holiness. To parents, let me tell you this, if you want your child to be smart and to be wise, if the child is not smart as you want him or her to be, uh, the best way to do so is to make sure you confer on that child what you want the child to be. But on most cases, I think we do that at the opposite. You are silly. You are, you understand me? But then you expect a child to change. So start telling that child that you are a smart kid. You are a good kid. And begin to see things work. You see, when the child goes wrong and you speak to him, look, you're a smart kid. Is that how a smart kid is supposed to behave? You begin to, they are smart. 
They can tell you things that you, you, you that will bait your mind. And I believe that that is what God has to ask. When we come to him, he, he declares us holy. And so we are holy. Understand you are holy. And that's why when you, you, you go wrong, you both sad within yourself. Your conscience even tells you that you're wrong. Because you realize that, no, I am not. That is not a standard for me. Friends, that is what he has called us to. So you, as I said, you see the attitude of this servant. The five, the one who received five, the one who received two, the Bible says they, they went straight to work with their talent. Quickly. Because they knew that their master could come at any time. They can't tell which day he will come. But from the story, the one who received one, based on his ability, the Bible says he dug a hole and he put it in it. Interestingly, I, 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 I can't tell what was going through his mind. But then at the end you understand what he, he, he he said he was afraid, and that the man or the master plants or, or, or harvest where he has not even planted. But I believe that if we can be fair to the master, you realize that the master does not a harvest where he has not he has not planted. And also, but he is a just God. He's a good God. And I believe that if he had not given that servant any of the talent, he would have complained. So based on his ability, he gives him one. So that, that guy will not come and say, you did not give me anything. You don't even love me. Friends, as a church, as individuals, let us understand that God has also given us something. There is none of us here who God has not given a wealth or a talent to. And not about if you can sing, you can dance. If you can dance, you can clap. If you, there is something that you can do in this house, in this kingdom. Because there is nobody who God has not given any talent to. Now what do you do with it? Would you hide it? Or would you put it at work, to work? I pray that you would do as the servants, the two servants did. The one who received five and the other one who received two. They did. And what's about, there is a need for you to understand that as tables, uh, we can be selfish. On most occasions, and what's about, a person who is a steward or you ask him to look after your asset, or your property for you can be so selfish and so self-ambitious or, or concentrate on himself so much that he does not care about what the master's goal or master's vision is. But when it comes to us, let's understand that the master expects something from us. There are people that if you give them something to look after for you, uh, if you don't take care, they will end up destroying it. Uh, uh, and especially for those of you who probably do projects back home, uh, probably you give your money to somebody to maybe buy your land or something and uh, sometimes you go back and it's not as you expect it to be. Uh, those of you who have vehicles somewhere, you realize that the person just misuses it and what have you because all he's thinking about is to get another car for himself. And so every day there's a complaint. It's sports and what have you. And so you realize that you can be self-centered so much that you forget that there is somebody who has entrusted a talent to you. And not for us Christians and as believers, let us understand that we are called to be selfless, to think about each other, others welfare. And not for the attitude that we should have is the attitude of Christ. In Philippians chapter 3, the Bible says, although he was God himself, he became man, even went so low, even by his servant, and he died on the cross. The Bible says, because of this, he has been given a name that is above our names. And Paul wanted you to check that we should have the same attitude, humility, respect for one another. I pray that God will help us. And we have a self-interest in this kingdom. God is calling us to make sure that we look to him. What he has called us for. His vision, his goal, his aspiration, his ambition. Much more than ours. As we do so, every other thing will be added unto us. In other words, Matthew chapter 6 says that Seek ye first the kingdom of God, the verse 33. And it's righteousness. And it says, All other things, all other things shall be added unto you. Friends, when we understand the one who has called us that he is our rewarder, we know for sure that everything that we do for him will never go unnoticed. And that he will surely reward us for every effort that we put into his work. Hallelujah. Because he is a good God. He is a good God. He is a good God. When he was on earth, he did not do his own will. In other part, when you read John chapter 6 verse 38, he says, For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. 
Your friends are doing our own will in this kingdom. And we will be doing to his word. Today he is calling us back to this. That we will be good and faithful servants in this kingdom. Making sure that whatever he has entrusted into our hands, we are using it for the profit of others. And of ourselves alone. Hallelujah. He will surely reward us someday, sometime when he returns. In other words, let us understand that he is interested in the prosperity of his people. When you read out Psalm 35, verse 27, the B says that God is interested in your prosperity. He wants it to be one with you. So never think that he can do it much better than he can do. In other words, when we come to him, he makes us. And no wonder the theme says that I will make you ruler over many things. And so understand that when we come to our God, he makes us what we cannot make ourselves. He makes us. He makes us. He makes us. It doesn't matter how well you think. Sometimes you think you, you can be smart in, in your world and you plan the world of you. But you realize that the plans of man don't normally go accordingly as we have planned. But when we walk in his will and we walk closely with him and we do what he has asked us to do, friends, we know for sure that he also rewards us. What are the skills God has given to you? Responsibilities, opportunities, time that he has given to you, ideas that he can use to move his work forward. Today he has given us back that if you can do something with what he has entrusted into your hands, that little, if we can be faithful in them, he will place us and he will make us rulers over many other things. We are stewards. We are stewards. We are called to look after it with his work. There's a day of accountability. And I believe that in the story we realized that he came back and then he asked that his servants or the stewards account for what he has entrusted into their hands. Friends, do we know that he will come again? Sometimes you realize that as a result of something that somebody has said to you, or probably something that you've had somebody say about you, that we've been forgotten all about his work. I wouldn't even do it anymore because this person said this against me. Today, God is calling us. He has given you a talent. He has given you something that you can do. You can do anything at all. I believe you can pray for others. That others in amongst us who may have some need, you can do something about it. There is something I believe that God has, has given to you. There is a passion. You realize that this is what I can also do for God. And today, He is calling us back. That what He has entrusted into us is if only we can be faithful in those little little things. Friends, he will give us uh, 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 the power to reign over many other things. But if you can't be faithful, even with a little, how, how much more would he give you more other things for you to rule over? In Matthew 16, 27, the Bible says that the Son of Man is going to come in his glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Friends, he will come again. He will come again. And there's a need for us not to forget this. As we walk with him daily, let us understand that Jesus is coming again. And he will reward every man according to his works. But my question is, is it only in the life after that we will be rewarded? Or in this life to God rewards those who, who work for him? In other words, when we read Mark chapter 10 verse 17 to 30, and I just want us to read the verse 28 to 30. And let us look at something. Is it only when he comes? Or in this life too? For all that we do for him, does God really reward us? Does God, does God always come to, to us and, and, and reward us for all that we have done? I, I want us to look at quickly uh, to this. Mark chapter 10, 28 and uh, to 30. And I will read from here. Mark chapter 10. 28 to 30. Peter said to him, You have left everything, we have left everything to follow you. And this is Jesus' response. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, No one who has left home, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or fields for me and for the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. In this present age, and goes into bracket homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, and with them persecution, and the age to come eternal life. Hallelujah. 
This story is about a young man, a rich young man who comes to Jesus. The Bible says he comes and he kneels down before Jesus and he asks Jesus, how can I have eternal life? Jesus looking at him and knowing him even before he came to him, tells him about the commandment. The Bible says he tells Jesus, even from my, my childhood when I was a boy, I followed all the commandments. Thou shalt not do this, I have done all of them. Jesus knowing very well what his weakness was and what his problem is. And I believe that he has been contemplating himself that look upon all my riches, I think I don't have eternal life. And so when he comes to him, he asks him about eternal life. And Jesus tells him, go and sell all that you own and just come after you have given it to the poor and follow me. The Bible says the man goes very sad. His failures was so sad. And the Bible says he leaves because he had great war. And that's why in those times, when you have war, it is said that it is God's blessing, it is God's favor upon your life that has given you what you own. And so for the disciples who were working with Jesus, hearing this for the first time, they were confused. Because to them, riches means God has blessed the person. If you are living in poverty to them, God is displeased with you. And so for Jesus to even go on to say that based on what a man did, not ready to even sell his possession with all that he had to even give to the poor. And he had a great wealth. The Bible says, Jesus says, it is difficult for even the rich to enter into the kingdom. The Bible says the disciples are confused. What is happening here? If the rich cannot enter in the kingdom of God, then what is happening here? But then in that story, the Bible says that Jesus tells Peter, after Peter had questioned Jesus, the master, for us we have learned everything. In other part, we were fishermen when you called us. Some of us were tax collectors. Lucrative jobs. At least, if nothing at all, we, we, we had something that was keeping us going every day. But today we have learned everything and we have come to follow you. But here we are, you telling this man that it is difficult for him to enter into the kingdom. Then what about us? We have learned everything. But thank God that the man that we serve or the God that we serve is a God who takes notice of everything that we do. There was nothing that we do for him that would go unnoticed. As a child of the living God, understand that everything that he has entrusted into your hands, everything that you are doing for him, understand that it will be noticed. Because God rewards hard work. Those who work for him, those who give their lives to him, totally. And make sure that others also uh, prosper in this life. Friends, he tells Peter and the rest, Look, anybody who has left everything, homes, brothers, sisters, mother, brothers, and one of you, children, to come and follow me, understand this, that in this present age, I, your God, will surely reward you. We understand that it is not only in the coming age that God will reward us. First, if we serve him diligently, if we serve him well, if we walk closely with him, is it we have the joy from above? In the midst of circumstances, in the midst of challenges, he speaks of our flowers or hearts. And no matter what, how the wind may blow, we know for sure that our God who reigns will surely come to our aid. As I said, he is a God who makes us. He makes us what we cannot make ourselves when we come to him. When we look through the scriptures, we realize that he's a God who makes people. Look at Abraham. The Bible says he called Abraham a man who had no child. The wife was barren. And the Bible says he calls him and he says, Abraham, come to me. Leave to the land that I'm going to show you. And I'll make you. 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 When it comes to him, he makes us. He makes us. And tonight, I believe that God is still making us. And if you want him to make you, he will surely make you. He'll make a difference. He says, I'll make you ruler over many things. Hallelujah. He's a God who makes and that's what he tells Abraham in Genesis 22, 17. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sun on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of your enemies. Hallelujah. It's a God who makes us. To Isaac who also followed and he is a son of Abraham. The Bible says that this man at a point in time when there was famine in the land, goes to a foreign land, the land of the Philistines. And the Bible says, in that same year when there was a famine, this young man plants in that same land, and the Bible says, he harvests a hundredfold. Something that man cannot do. 
for himself. But there was persecution. Look what the Jesus says. With all the blessing that he blesses, there was going to be persecution. Because the people began to envy him. They could not understand how on earth a man who is a foreigner could make it in a land where there was famine. Do you understand that when he did well, where people have done well and there was no water coming out, this man is able to dig walls and water is flowing. It had to do with the fact that God was with him. Amen. God has made him. Do we try to make ourselves? Do you remember the story of Babel, Genesis chapter 11? The Bible says that people gathered and they said, let us make a name for ourselves. Let us build a tower so tall that will reach to the heavens. And the Bible says God himself comes and it confuses them with the language and so they scatter over the face of the earth. When we try to make ourselves in every area of our lives, friends, let us understand that we cannot stand forever. Every nation that has taught to, to make itself has never been able to look at the empires and the kingdoms that has existed. You look back and realize that it is history now. Kingdoms, nations that were great and what have you. So you realize that when God makes us, friends, because he is the one who has made us, we stand firm. We are unshakable because we belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Look at the life of Jacob. Jacob was a trickster. A man was a supplanter. But when God calls him, he makes him. He changes his name. His name begins, now becomes Israel. And the Bible says God even blesses him. His sons become the nation of Israel, his 12 sons. And it tells you what God can do. Remember Jacob, uh, Joseph, a man who had a dream at the age of 17. But as a result of this, you know what happened to him. That he was sold by his own brothers because they could not understand why the little boy among them says that he had had a dream that God would make him big and rule over his brothers and his sisters and what have you. But even when he was sold, when he read the scriptures, the Bible says God was still with him. Even when he had a problem because uh, uh, he was wrongly accused of rape, which he had not done in Potiphar's house. The Bible says he was put in prison. But even that, God even made him reign because the Bible says that he was made the captain of all the prisoners. The reason being that God was with him. But the end of the story has to do with the fact that in the fullness of time, because God was with him, this man who was in prison, the Bible says was released out of prison and he became a prime minister in the land of Egypt. God himself made him. He didn't make himself. Friends, if we can be faithful, and you look at this life and realize that this is what people who walk, who walk closely with God, faithful in what God has uh, entrusted into their hands. I believe that if you were, uh, you were, you were Jacob, who a lady, a uh, Potiphar's wife, was giving you scholarship and uh, wants to sleep with you free of charge, I, I believe that you would have done it free of throw your master is not there. But the Bible says he refused. Do you understand that he needs to go to prison for it? Do we easily fall into sin and live our lives anyhow? If we can be faithful to God in little of the things, friends, He will make us rulers over many, many things. If I want to go on, I believe that I will talk about other great men that you already know about. Look at Israel itself. Israel was in captivity in Egypt for 130 years. When the fullness of time, the Bible says God Himself takes them out and He tells Moses and Ezra chapter 19 that, look, if only the people will obey me and, and, and follow my, my, my word, then I'll make them a holy nation. They'll be my most treasured possession. That is what he has made us. First Peter 2 9 says, We are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a people belong to God Himself. That we will declare His praises. Even to the world. Because He has delivered us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Look at Daniel. The hardship that he had to go through. But Daniel was somebody who stood for God. The Bible says he refused to eat the king's meal. But the Bible says at the end of the test, he was ten times, and his brothers were ten times better and wiser than those who ate the, the king's meal. Do we still compromise in our work with God? If we cannot be trusted with the little God has entrusted into the hands, friends, it is difficult for us to be allowed to rule over many. Tonight, as we look at this word, even tomorrow and tomorrow next. Let us understand this. For us to be able to rule over many things, 
God has expected that the letter that he has entrusted into your hands, we are able to use it and work with it. Know you very well that the master will come again. And that's about he is a rewarder. He is profit oriented. He looks for profit. But if we continue to do so, that God is able to supply all our needs according to his riches and growth, will surely cause us to reign over many things. If we do so, then we can be able to stand like Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 19, Nehemiah, after he had built that, that walls of, of, of Jerusalem that was broken, the Bible says, he tells God, remember, oh my God, all that I've done for these people and bless me for it. So it is not only in the life after that God will out for our good works and for serving him diligently. But if we stand for him, and use every talent that he's given unto us, serving faithfully. Friends, we can also stand like Nehemiah and cry out, Lord, remember me. Make me ruler of many things because of what I've done. Tonight, may the Lord make you ruler of many things. In every area of your life that you need a touch from God, in every area that you seem to be struggling, tonight, as a result of the entrance of his word, I believe that life has come to that situation. Are you going through any difficulty in your life? Understanding he loves you, he wants the best for you. And tonight, in the next few minutes, we want to cry out unto this God who is able to make us. If you're working in the situation, I'm leaving the situation, you realize that I have made myself so he is able to change your destiny because he's a God who makes us. The Lord which bless us, and the Lord continue to grant us grace as we walk with him. May he continue to shower his blessings and even rain down his blessings upon us. That in this life, the world around us will see that of a truth because of our faithfulness given in little things. Our God has caused us to reign even over many things. Amen. Amen.